Miyamoto Musashi was a philosopher, author, artist, Buddhist, ronin, or a wandering samurai with no lord or master, and arguably the greatest swordsman of all time. The date of his birth is mysterious, as well as his exact origins. Best estimates argue he was born circa 1584 as Miyamoto Benosuke, his childhood name, in Harima province to the rice farmer and swordsman Shinmen Munasai. There is debate if Shinmen was even his biological father, and who his mother was is even more mysterious. Regardless, the swordsman helped raise the young boy. From age 7, his uncle Dorimbo raised Musashi whose restless nature eventually led him to the life of the sword, Bushido, Buddhism, and becoming one of the greatest champions in recorded history. Throughout history, champions appear as virtuous individuals who would battle on behalf of a group, army, school, or philosophy to settle disputes against opponents. Instead of blood having to be spilt by countless warriors on both sides, a champion was selected by each side to settle the battle. Miyamoto was one such champion, traveling throughout Japan to duel the best swordsmen and became famous for his tactics, diplomacy, morality, and spirit. He is seen as a kensei or sword saint in Japan today. There is only one who may bear this title at any given time. Musashi was known for showing up hours late to duels, presumably to cause psychological stress in opponents, and known for mastering the dual wielding of swords, or sometimes even oars from the boat he paddled to battle with, or wooden swords called boken. He fought his first duel at the age of 13 when he saw a sign put up by the warrior Arima Kihei alongside the Sayo River challenging any local swordsman. Musashi rose to the challenge and wrote his name alongside the notice. When the day came, Musashi killed Kihei, who thought he would have an easy win against the adolescent. Miyamoto would be undefeated in 60 duels during his lifetime. He fought in six major battles, including the key battle of Sekigahara at age 17. This monumental battle marked the beginning of the Edo period, in which Tokugawa Ieyasu reigned as shogun. The Edo period is seen as peaceful compared to earlier periods in feudal Japanese history, and samurai became even more critical in policing and governance during its time. Musashi became the provincial governor of Miyamoto, where he was from. He created and refined a two-sword kenjutsu technique called Niten Ichi, two heavens as one, or Nito Ichi, two swords as one, or another way to call it Niten Ichi Ryu, a Kongen Buddhist sutra that refers to the two heavens as the two guardians of Buddha, the name of his school of swordsmanship. In this technique, the swordsman uses both a long sword and a companion sword at the same time, such as a katana with the wakizashi. This technique appeared for the first time after Musashi defeated the famed Yoshioka school of swordsmen and was forced to dual wield swords in order to fend off the Yoshioka supporters as he left Kyoto after defeating their top swordsmen. His next route led him to Nara, the old seat of the emperor and Fujiwara's, and where the center of Buddhism was seated in Japan. Around 1614, during the siege of Osaka Castle, Musashi, who was fighting with the troops of Mizuno Hyuga no Kami, or Katsunari, carried a five-yard-long banner on which in bold characters was written the slogan, Men from the realm of Shakya, or present-day Nepal, knew and practiced the laws of Buddha. We know and practice the laws of the art of war. At one stage, he was standing on a bridge, brandishing his long boken, and being cheered on as he cast the enemy troops off the bridge, left and right. Musashi spent many years studying Buddhism and swordsmanship. He was an accomplished artist, sculptor, and calligrapher. Records also show that he had architectural skills as well. 
Also, he seems to have had a rather straightforward approach to combat with no additional frills or aesthetic considerations. This was probably due to his real-life combat experience, although in his later life, Musashi followed the more artistic paths. He made various Zen brush paintings, calligraphy, and sculpted wood and metal. Even in The Book of Five Rings, he emphasizes that samurai should understand other professions as well. It should be understood that Musashi's writings were very ambiguous, and translating them into English makes them even more so. That is why so many different translations of The Book of Five Rings can be found. Musashi grew up in a highly misogynistic Japanese society, yet I believe his teachings can be applied to anyone. In his influential book, used even in business schools today, Musashi writes there are four ways men pass through life, as gentlemen, farmers, artisans, or merchants. The cryptic figurative text has different meanings given what lens of understanding you use to read the book. For example, he compares the way of the carpenter to strategy. He uses the allegory of constructing a house with different types of woods used in building a clan's house of rain. An interesting point is what Miyamoto refers to as the four houses. This refers to the game of Go, which was the game of strategy at the time for nobles, statesmen, and the elite. Compared to, say, chess, the number of possible moves in a position is much larger. In chess, it's about 20. In Go, it's about 200. And the number of possible configurations of the board is more than the number of atoms in the universe. The four Go houses were four major schools of Go instituted, supported, and controlled by the state at the beginning of the Tokugawa shogunate. Whomever was the best Go player received the title of Godoroko, who mediated the four houses, approved rank promotions, and was direct tutor to the shogun. The Book of Five Rings was named as such because the ring has no beginning or end, and is reminiscent of the ancient Ouroboros symbols found across cultures. The five books were ground, water, fire, wind, and the void, aka known as the illusionary nature of worldly things. The Book of Five Rings may also be a metaphor to battling across the five dimensional planes, the fifth being the most esteemed of these five, or the realm of spirits and higher consciousnesses. In the ground book, Musashi speaks straightforward, yet in the second book, the water book, which I find synonymous with spirit book, he lays a trap for the reader by saying, do not let your spirit be influenced by your body, or your body influenced by your spirit. The negative of this statement, if you will, would be, let others' spirit be influenced by your body, or let others' body be influenced by your spirit. The interpretation is based whether or not the reader believes other people's spirit can enter their own body instead of just their own. Musashi goes on to describe the five attitudes, which has everything to do with time, space, and gravity, or the three-dimensional reality we live in, while practicing the practical application of his school of sword fighting. The five attitudes are cuts to the upper, middle, lower, left, and right. One of the few major battles with documented evidence that Musashi participated in was the Shimabara Rebellion, when he was at the age of 53. Catholic rebels supported by Ronin and Portuguese traders revolted against the Tokugawa and Dutch, led in help by Musashi, who served as one of their field commanders. Rebels were fighting against drastic tax increases instated by the daimyo Matsukura Katsue, who violently opposed Christianity and who broadly raised taxes in order to construct his new Shimabara castle. Catholic rebels turtled in Hara Castle while the Tokugawa-backed daimyo received over 125,000 troops to squash the rebellion. 
The Buddhist Musashi reportedly fell off his horse when a Catholic rebel threw a rock at him. After months of fighting, the rebels were killed and the Dutch proved their loyalty to the Tokugawa, thus setting their firm trade monopoly with Japan. The history of religion for power, control, and money are inextricably entangled in Japanese history, let alone world history. Tokugawa saw Catholicism as a threat to a unified Japanese spirit and decided a hybrid of Buddhism and Shintoism was the best spiritual path for Japan going forward. Organized religion would be tossed in the air again during the Meiji Restoration and the overthrow of the Tokugawa, where Western organized religions again would make a re-entry into Japan. The Ronin philosopher, artist, and grizzled swordsman Musashi completed the venerable text on the subtle art of strategy, the Book of Five Rings, during his final years. In it, Musashi shared his teachings and was where he finally gave his full name, Shinmen Musashi no Kami Fujiwara no Harunobu, during his last days of his life. Musashi claimed his bloodline to be direct descendant from the influential Fujiwaras, who dominated the politics of the Heian period through the monopoly of region positions, organized religion, and strategic arrangement of marriages of Fujiwara daughters. Fujiwaras of the time acted on behalf of child emperors and empresses until they were of age. This influence lasted until the Meiji era, when the Bushido system dissolved in governance application and swords were traded by the merchant class for guns that were brought in by the West and quickly catapulted the previously lowly merchant class to the top of the social hierarchy, and thus transforming Japan forever. Here are some quotes from Miyamoto Musashi that I feel speak strongly on who he was in spirit and being. Both those teaching and those learning the way are concerned with coloring and showing off their technique, trying to hasten the bloom of the flower. Think of the enemy as your own troops. The teacher is as a needle, the disciple is as thread. In short, it is difficult for large numbers of men to change position, so their movements can be easily predicted. An individual can easily change his mind, so his movements are difficult to predict. If you are following the true way and diverge a little, this will later become a large divergence. In my strategy, one man is the same as 10,000. So this strategy is the complete warrior's craft. In everyday life, you must act like you are always in battle, though you're not. And when you are in battle, act like you are not fighting when you are. All things entail rising and falling timing. Find the relevant timing. First, seeing the distance timing and the background timing. This is the main strategy. It is especially important to know the background timing, otherwise your strategy will become uncertain. All the five books are chiefly concerned with timing. The important thing in strategy is to suppress the enemy's useful actions but allow his useless actions. When you cannot be deceived by men, you will have realized the wisdom of strategy. When you learn about other people around you, then you can learn about yourself. By knowing things that exist, you can know that which does not exist. That is the void. This is the way for men who want to learn my strategy. 1. Do not think dishonestly. 2. The way is in training. 3. Become acquainted with every art. 4. Know the ways of all professions. 5. Distinguish between gain and loss in worldly matters. 6. Develop intuitive judgment and understanding for everything. 7. 
perceive those things which cannot be seen. 8. Pay attention, even to trifles. 9. Do nothing which is of no use. Miyamoto Musashi is believed to have died from lung cancer at the age of 61. He wrote other books called The Path of Aloneness and The School of Strategy of Two Heavens as One. He remains as one of Japan's greatest philosophers, samurai, and artists. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or you just found it useful. I am making some videos based off of your comments, so let me know down below what videos you'd like to see. Until I see you on the next one, have a great day.